Hi, my name is Wendy Olson. I'm working with the team at the University of Manchester to try and improve the use of quantitative data in sociology and other social science classrooms. And I'd like to talk just for a couple of minutes about scaffolding in the sociology classroom. It's where we try and enrich the classroom with new methods or using quantitative data. And the scaffolding actually has a very uh, particular meaning in, in pedagogy, in, in studies of how people learn and of education. I'll go through what scaffolding is and then I'm going to give an example on the screen um, of, of how that might work. But if you wanted to, students to grow and be able to do new things like interpret a table that they haven't done before because they're studying sociology and they don't have a lot of mathematics training, then you need to get them to develop habits of interpreting tables very well. And that first means understanding the tables. So the scaffolding idea is that you build up from not being afraid of the table to reading the table, making statements about the table, and then critically assessing what the table is telling us. And that, that really does mean interpretation. And the literature on scaffolding says that we have to actually use shorthand procedures and not just do the same thing every time. But when we've done something three or four times, we've got the language down, we know what the numbers mean, we know how to check the headings and the notes and the column row uh, labels. And as a result, we can do things more quickly with ease. So you're building up the building blocks of learning until you can actually be quite proficient. So scaffolding suggests that the students learn a kind of shorthand for interpreting. So my example is going to be about the use of tables. I'll just show you a cross-tabulation that, that comes in sociology. Your, your lecture would be peppered with one or two of these cross-tabulations, not very many. And here, the cross-tabulation appears in a, in a PDF file, it's in an Adobe Reader, and the PDF is a professional journal article, so we're showing the undergraduate how to read the professional journal article, and I'll just block out part of the table. That is a two-by-two cross-tabulation. And over here is, a, is another two-by-two cross-tabulation. And the first thing is to show students what this actually is. And that if there are percentages here, what are they percentages of? And how can we derive the original numbers back or derive some probabilities from the table if we need to? Now, some classes at year three might actually use a, a, um, a chi-squared to, to test whether there's a prevalence in that table that's statistically significant. But in years one and two, I think the real focus is to get them to correctly interpret the percentage and to make comparisons. So here it's whether men or women are more likely to live alone and actually whether that then happens in Northern Europe more frequently than in Southern Europe. And indeed it is much more common in Northern Europe, for example Germany, Netherlands, UK, compared with the Southern Europe for, for cultural reasons really. And, and in sociology then we're moving from the numbers shorthand where we interpret the table correctly to the critical assessment of cultural trends or social patterns where we're much, much, much more careful with language and there's another kind of proficiency there which I think also deserves scaffolding. So all in all, up to now, I've shown you the scaffolding idea and I just wanted to, to conclude really by showing you you an image that shows the movement upward. So our view is that in year one, every student should begin to be a critical reader of data. These PowerPoint slides are available on our website for you to, to review. In, in year two, they should be able to start making the tables themselves or studying graphs and converting um, from a graphical image to a sentence that says very clearly what they've learned. And perhaps in year three, they could be a user. But as soon as they start doing these more advanced activities, they become a better critical reader of data. So the scaffolding idea actually isn't upward into the land of statistics. It's forward into being a better sociologist or political scientist or whatever their disciplinary specialism is. So just to, to recap then, I've defined scaffolding and I've shown you how I could use a table in a lecture or in an activity for students and how they would probably learn more from that in the long run.